we are back. So, uh, our plan for now is we will talk about monitoring for around 10 minutes. We will have 15 minutes for monitoring exercises. And then we'll talk about some of the rest of the stuff we have. And then we'll have the Q&A. So we'll be a bit behind the published schedule, but really about what we'd expect. So Q&A was designed for buffer time. So, um, Simo, do yeah. you share your screen or me? Yeah. Yeah, if you want to share okay. my screen. You have it. Can you scroll up? Or maybe I hmm? should share, share the screen. No, no, no. Or... This is the, the one I want yeah. to show. So, okay. so, so this is uh, the monitoring page. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we have already gone through many of these monitoring tools. So, so the Slurm Q and Slurm history. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll talk about a bit more about like monitoring, monitoring from the hardware side and also from the like, uh, idea side. So, so the monitoring, like we have now been monitoring what is the queue thing and what's, what's it doing, but really what you usually want to do is that when you submit jobs, you first want to monitor how they like, do they go into the queue? Did they crash immediately? Did you have a typo somewhere? But then the more important part is that while the job is running, you want to monitor the job state and how it's performing. So if you think about like yesterday, uh, we Enrico showed this kind of a graph, like what's what's usually happening when you're like doing stuff. <laughs> so if you think about you're you're here, and you're doing something with an application that runs on some operating system, uh, which then runs on some actual like machine, and and then it then the stuff comes back from the calculations it's stored somewhere in a disk or somewhere somewhere you maybe visualize it with an application and then you see the results for yourself mm -hmm. well now we've been doing like basically this left half of this situation so we have used different applications to run on the cluster and on the cluster hardware so some compute nodes but now the question is that how do you like actually get the results out of the cluster how do you how do you do that how do you like get the results for yourself and this is really up to the program that you're using so it's a good idea in your program to add something that tells you what the program is doing so it can be something like every like richard said previously like every like i'm doing this like i have done ten thousand iterations i have done like some sort of print statement something that describes what the program is doing saving some checkpoint maybe of a model if you're running some model you store like a temporary checkpoint you do some like print statements that describe what the program is doing because you cannot see it while it's running it's running on there in the background so basically your interface to the program to monitor the program is is like looking with the with the cat function that we used in the command line so you need to be able to decipher the program state based on some logging that the program is doing you need to you need to be able to see like some some sort of a progress from the command line and and then after you have like finished the program you can then use slurm so basically the slurm is the operating system mm -hmm. in a cluster you can use that then to like see what the program was actually doing did it finish correctly what kind of resources it actually used and and then you can use some other program yourself to to visualize the results but the main thing is that like this pipeline or this kind of like loop that you have here when you're running stuff in the in the cluster it's a lot it has to be programmed a lot by you like it has to be like you your code needs to be able to tell you what what it's doing uh, there's some information in this uh, monitoring uh, page like if you want to go in detail there's some information of different kinds of like monitoring that you can do you can read this uh, if you want uh, it describes like how how do how you should do monitoring in your program itself but that's something that we cannot like we can of course help you with that but we cannot like tell one good solution because it's mm -hmm. uh it depends on the program uh, that you're running 
Yeah. Okay. So now this is the stuff that while your job is running, you need to look at this. Uh, and you need to write some sort of like uh, output into your program. But after it has finished, uh, we already went through some of these Slurm history and Slurm queue and those kinds of things where you can monitor like did the job finish correctly in the queue. But there's one extra tool called SF, which shows the Slurm efficiency or the efficiency of your job. Mm -hmm. So Richard, uh, so here's an example output. What does yeah. this output tell you? And how do you do it? Yeah. How do you get this kind of an output? So I see we ran SF with the job ID. And then it tells us some basic stuff like the job ID again, who ran it, that kind of things. But the most interesting part is down below where it says CPU efficiency. 90.62% of 32 seconds of core wall time. And of the memory efficiency I see, it says 0.08% of two gigabytes. So this basically does the math for you and will tell you overall were your requirements about right. So for CPU efficiency, 90%, well, it should be a bit higher, but it was a short job, so it's probably uh, inefficient when it's first starting. For memory efficient, it seems really low, but that's also because it was really short, so it wasn't able to get good statistics. And this is something that you should yeah, be so, running so on your jobs regularly. Yeah, so so in this kind of a output, you can see like how how long the job was running and how much it utilized the CPUs. Uh, so uh, you notice that in this job, there were two CPUs used mm -hmm. and uh, there's 100% here in the efficiency. So it means that 100% of the two CPUs, so basically it, it utilized uh, like two CPUs at the 90% efficiency. So the maximum is 100%. Uh, so uh, if if the job utilizes the CPU resources it has requested fully, it, it will be 100%. Yeah. Uh, and, if, and the memory efficiency can go above 100% if you uh, your job uses too much memory. So you want it to be close mm -hmm. to 100, but not over 100. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I guess that's basically it then. So do we, oh, the GPU job monitoring, we will talk about tomorrow with the GPU yeah, stuff. We'll, we'll, so yeah, we'll not... mention this uh, in the GPU part, but there are ways of monitoring. GPU yeah. utilization is a bit more harder to monitor, but there are tools to monitor it. Let's go to an exercise now. Yeah, uh, so, so we will have 15 minutes. And exercise number one is a basic example where you, well, you run something with different parameters and you will be able to see how SF can tell you the efficiency. And you'll see that the larger problem sizes are more efficient. Mm. Yeah, so there's number one. Yeah, yeah so you well, can you can consider this like a, as a serial uh, serial job writing exercise as well. So the first part is basically how to write serial job and how to monitor it. Second part is how to monitor individual job steps. So we were discussing the benefits of job steps. And the third one is, uh, well, basically the same thing. So yeah, let's do 15 minutes yeah. on this. Yeah. Uh, so. And try what you can in 15 minutes. So uh, for number two, we haven't really gone over the different threaded parts yet, but it can be a preview for the next day or tomorrow if you're interested. But if you can just do number one, then that's pretty good. So, yes. yes. Okay. See you in 15 minutes then. Okay. Bye. And we're back. Hello. Hello. So we cheated a bit and did the exercise at the same time while you were doing it.
uh, so that we can go through it faster because like running through the, some of the simulations takes a bit of time. So uh, I'll just we'll just show the the uh, script that we created. So here is the script. Okay. So yeah. we have the usual suspects, time, memory. We had to increase the memory limit a bit because we got a OOM error with lower memory limit. So this is basically doing multiple of these uh, at the same time in the same script, multiple of these exercises. So, so it runs the 10, uh, the 100 million uh, simulation, but it also runs all of the lower ones. So if we look at the output, uh, like first, first we should note that the script itself, it creates this output file. Uh, mm. Well, it, it produces the output in the Slurm script. So you can yeah. see. Uh, uh, 10, uh, hundred thousand. Yeah, you can see the output, output, output here. So you can, you can get like the uh, output here. There's also a flag there that it produces output to an outside file, but but you can, uh, yeah, you can see here that it produces uh, output, so we could easily monitor what the job was doing. Yeah. Uh, if we we'll run Slurm history, we will okay. get output like this. So you can see uh, previously that here was the uh, cancelled one that the memory memory uh, that ran out of memory, but but here below are the one, is the one that. Um, mm -hmm didn't run out of memory and you can see that like the rest of the jobs they don't seem to use any memory because they run so fast that again slurm didn't capture the output necessarily but over here then the last one it, we, we can notice that it used like three gigabytes of memory so that's why the job was failing beforehand like the last step was too heavy for it so it it didn't um didn't manage to do it yeah and over here, we noticed uh, we can see like how long it took to run each of these steps and so forth. Yeah. Now, if we look at the, we can use the SF on that job. So we can use SF to the job as a whole. Actually, let's do it in the other window with a better, better uh, font. <laughs> so over here, if we run the SF, quickly move this it up so you can see yeah. the history so the commands uh, so you can see here that the memory efficiency was 76 percent uh, and the cpu efficiency was well quite good uh, 96 percent mm -hmm. so you uh, the memory efficiency here it of course means like the maximum memory with relative to the limit so it doesn't mean that the average memory usage was good but but it just means that like we were close to the limit that we had set. Now we can uh, we can run the SF to check the individual job steps as well. So if we, for example, check step one, which was 400, uh, um, the, we noticed that, okay, the memory efficiency and the time CP efficiency, well, it doesn't even show me maybe the data because it was so fast. Uh, but yeah. if we check, for example, step five, uh, which was okay. for 10 million, uh, so we noticed yeah. that the CPU efficiency is pretty bad and the memory efficiency is pretty, pretty bad because, like, again, it's too fast of a job, too small of a job yeah. to, like, actually do anything. Mm -hmm. And But if we look at the last step, the last step itself, we noticed that well, basically all, mm -hmm. all of the time used was using this step. So this is basically the same as if we would run it without the step, uh, because like most of the job was done during this step. But we can use yeah. SF to monitor like individual job step mm -hmm. efficiencies. Yeah. Okay. So th that's about um, okay. efficiency. Should we 